There was a major development this evening in the crime investigation. A second arrest warrant was issued for a material witness who, amazingly, has been in federal custody for three weeks on a different charge. The man is said to be connected to the Osama bin Laden terror network. And like so many others we have heard about this week, he came here ostensibly to train as a pilot. As Brian Ross tells us, the last 100 hours of this investigation has focused on the seven pilots whose actions horrified the world. I've looked at those tapes over and over again in New York, and as gut-wrenching as they are to me as a pilot, I can tell you absolutely that the people flying those airplanes knew what they were doing. And it wouldn't have happened without the pilots. Somebody who didn't know what they were doing might try to descend the airplane into New York and, and try to make a run on the building at a higher speed. And if you did that, you're probably going to miss the building. And it might not have happened without small private flight schools across America, from Florida to Minneapolis to Phoenix. The fact that there were a uh, number of individuals that happened to receive training at flight schools here uh, is news, quite obviously. If we had understood that to be the case, uh, uh, we would have, uh, perhaps one could have averted this. For example, the suicide hijacker who took over the plane that hit the Pentagon was trained in Scottsdale, Arizona, and then awaited orders in San Diego. They started moving out Saturday night and Sunday they were gone. Ed Murray of San Diego says the pilot and two other terrorists lived in his apartment complex and that he now realizes what they were doing, studying flight patterns over Washington. They were always on the computer. Uh, I could look in, if the door was open, you could always see a flight simulator type of thing with airplanes on it. This is what they had, a Microsoft flight simulator. Many pilots use Microsoft flight simulator to help with their training. Sold for less than $100. Here it shows what it would look like on the approach to Washington, D.C., to the Pentagon, the ultimate target of the men from San Diego. There's quite a bit of skill required to get an aircraft like a 757 exactly on target at the first and second floors of the Pentagon. Tragically, that was something the terrorists on American Flight 77 were able to learn. I mean, that is not anywhere near as easy as it might seem, because the, the aircraft at the last minute is going to respond a little differently, and you have to feel, you have to understand the feel of a large aircraft in order to make it do that. The same Microsoft program can also be set up to reflect a chilling flight path right into the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Even if you are a, a, an individual who has resigned himself to die and you are lining this airplane up with that building, you are going to be very busy correcting that airplane at 250, 280, 300 knots because you've got wind currents. On that particular day, on that 767 strike of United 175, the airplane was blowing a little to the right, which is why at the last he had to bank to the left. That has to be done subtly. If it was done with too much control input, he would have over-controlled and flown off to the left side of the building. Of course, I wish he had. These are the two men who flew the two planes into the World Trade Center. The terrorist one-two punch. Mohammed Atta, who flew the first plane, and Marwan al-Shihi, who flew the second. They started their pilot training more than 15 months ago at this small aviation school in Venice, Florida. In these uh, two gentlemen's case, I can't call them gentlemen. In these two animals cases, they, um, they apparently were pilots and good pilots because they conducted the training and did the training and passed their license. Then the two signed up for flight simulator lessons to learn how to fly big jets, paying cash. When Otta's car was discovered abandoned at the Boston airport, the FBI found copies of these two flight instruction tapes. So we're expecting a normal takeoff. One more indication of how seriously the terrorists took their airborne mission. Today, yet another possible terrorist pilot was identified by ABC News, 33-year-old Zacharias Musaya, who it now turns out was already in federal custody three weeks ago before the attacks because he had raised suspicions at a Minnesota flight training school. Instructors at the Pan Am Flight School said they called the FBI on August 17th after Musaya showed up offering cash and asking for lessons on a 747 flight simulator. He reportedly was not interested in takeoffs and landings, only how to fly the plane in a horizontal position. The idea of somebody showing up at a 747, a professional flight school, and saying, I just want to learn how to fly horizontal, is, is absurd in the extreme. Nobody would, would put him in the seat. After the flight school tip, Musawi was taken into custody on immigration charges, and FBI agents then traced him back to another flight school he had attended earlier this year in Norman, Oklahoma. 
the flight school manager in Oklahoma told ABC News that FBI agents seemed very concerned about Musawi's intentions. We asked him what, what um, you know, what the circumstances were with him, and they didn't really <clears throat> indicate anything other than that, well, he did something very bad. It's not known whether Musaya was supposed to play a role in this week's attacks, but he remained in the county jail up through Tuesday. His activities known to some in the FBI, but for some reason, never sounding any alarm bells in Washington. The information that was known in August about Musawi, uh, particularly from foreign intelligence services, was that he was a member of bin Laden's organization, Al-Qaeda. And that should have been a very large warning flag if that information had been put together in Washington. It was not. Now, federal agents are very much interested in Musaya. Yesterday, he was released from the county jail and taken to New York City, where he's been held now and charged as a material witness. And it's not the only case of what might have been a missed opportunity, Elizabeth. Newsweek magazine is reporting that the CIA put out an alert last month on one of the terrorists who hijacked the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. ABC News has confirmed he had been spotted in Asia, meeting with one of Osama bin Laden's terrorists, the man behind the explosion of the USS Cole. But by the time the CIA put out the alert last month, the man was already here in the country, and a search by the FBI in the New York area failed to turn him up in time. Brian, why didn't the FBI in Washington, D.C. put all those factors together? Well, that's a very big question tonight. Uh, it points to an overall failure of intelligence, of law enforcement. There are so many leads the FBI gets, the CIA gets about the bin Laden people. They don't really have the manpower in many cases to, to put it all together. And uh, we don't know exactly what happened in Minnesota. The FBI agents out there were very concerned about it, but somehow that concern did not translate into a major alert in this country. In the meantime, there's been a lot of speculation that there were, in fact, 20 terrorists as part of these four teams because it, the math didn't make sense. The FBI had identified 19 suspects. Could this man in Minnesota be the 20th terrorist? Well, that's one thing the FBI now wants to find out. That's why they've uh, arrested him as a material witness, flown him here to New York at the center of the case. Each of the planes, three planes, had five members, five hijackers on board. Uh, the plane that took off from Newark and crashed had only four, and many are suggesting, well, one must be missing. And very quickly, there, this is the second arrest of a material witness. The first arrest, I understand that man is not cooperating. Uh, he was held as a possible flight risk. That's really why they issue these uh, arrest warrants uh, for material witnesses, to keep people in the country where they can control them, they don't run away, and they believe these people have uh, serious uh, pieces of information they need to know about who was behind all this. How do these hijackers live in this country for so long, live so openly, who financed it, who paid for it? Those are many of the questions they're trying to ask of these witnesses. Many disturbing questions. All right, Brian Ross, thank you for that report tonight.